perfect storm is the is the absolute best phraseology for that you know if you're just looking at all of these things building uh-huh. right now even if some of them don't hit some portion of them are going to hit and almost all of them are catastrophic absolutely and um to your point if you look at the housing like some of the markets i mean you have markets that have taken already a, a little bit of a hit right where a lot of people are moving from um, mm-hmm. just, I'm just thinking of New York and, and uh, you're on the East Coast. And then there's some markets that it's not even hot. It's in mania phase. It's where, yep. you know, there's a house listed in a neighborhood because of the lack of supply, especially. I, mm-hmm. I'm just thinking in the market where I'm at in Bucks County, uh, Pennsylvania, and where a lot of New Yorkers are moving to. A lot of folks are moving into that area where a house is listed and it's like, I mean, an open house, it's just, co- I mean, the cars are coming into the neighborhood and it's like yeah. a percentage over the asking price. It's just, it's mm-hmm. mania time in certain markets yeah. already. Yeah, it's just not simply sustainable. I mean, everyone that kind of follows market trends or, you know, particularly in real estate knows that on average market corrections happen about every 10 years. We're overdue. You know, and I think that the pandemic stalled that out, obviously, with the moratoriums um, uh, and the forbearances. Obviously, that kind of kicked the can down the road. But, you know, these overinflated values right now, they, they, Mark, real estate's cyclical, you know. So, you know, it's not like this is going to be a, a boom forever. So we really cater to and, and are really focused on being the folks that are ready and, and waiting to capitalize on when it does ultimately correct. I don't remember if it was a podcast um, or an article I read recently, and it was about Washington, D.C., and it was a 75, it was a condemned home, condemned home now it's got the dirt that it was on obviously that's worth money but you know it was uh, around seventy five thousand dollars worth of land that sold for five hundred thousand dollars that's insane to me so you know all these people that are out there really overextending themselves right now um and they think that they're doing it for the right reasons for their family or whatever the case may be and i'm not faulting them you know but a lot of people just have these blinders on right now and and it just smells to me like 06 07 08 where oh this is just a forever thing right and if you just look at historical data involving real estate and you do your research you just know that that's just not sustainable it just can't be yeah and such a distortion right so usually you have such you have market distortions and in mm-hmm. the last one i mean it was the just between interest rates, the the lack, the the lending. I mean, mm-hmm. at Fogamer, you get it, you get a mortgage, and you get your- <laughs> that's right, that's right. Yep. So that it provided a massive distortion in the marketplace. And now you mentioned, and I wrote it down here. This is one of the things I was going to include in our conversation: the moratoriums, the mm-hmm. very very low interest rates, the moratoriums, and then also the changing economy, where you no longer have to be in New York City, you can actually move uh, Mm -hmm. to a different state and still do the same job, but you're just now working from home. But now you have a bigger house, you have a bigger yard and so forth. So there's massive distortions, right? Yeah, no, absolutely. And if you just take a look at just recent interest rates rising, so we were sitting sub 3%, you know, right around 2.75% for a handful of months. It's up to, I think, three and a quarter right now. Um, Obviously, inflation is going up. Um, The Fed has come out recently and said that they're not planning on raising interest rates again. I'll be shocked if they don't. That's going to have to kind of balance out. I think also looking at... um, surpluses, you know, supply and demand. So right now there's a heavy, heavy demand for homes, um, but the supply is a little bit low. So once that supply catches up with demand, you know, obviously when supply and demand are kind of equal, that's going to go ahead and start, um, you know, dropping prices as well. So, you know, there's so much data out there right now. And if people are just really kind of paying attention, they know where to look. Um, It's, Again, and I don't want to sound like a broken record, it, it's an absolute, you know, when. It's it's not an if that the market's going to correct. Unfortunately, uh, bad things are going to happen to really good people. And I never sit around and, and cross my fingers waiting for that to happen. But it is inevitable. And, and I plan on making a lot of money off of it, period. And I'm not ashamed to say that. Profit's not a bad word. 
Yeah, it's no, it's uh, uh, to your to your point. It's uh, it's baked into the cake. You know, one mm -hmm. of the things that some of the data that I was looking at was just some of the uh, houses that are behind on mortgage payments. I mean, it's astounding. I forget the the exact number, but there's a it's a lot. There's about I think there's almost I think there's over three million houses that are in forbearance right now. Three million mortgages in forbearance. That's ending. You know, the moratoriums on rent are are ending. You know, now could the government kind of extend those again? Maybe, but there's already been I think three extensions on forbearances and at least two or three on the moratoriums right now. They they just can't do that forever. You know, mortgage services, servicers they they ultimately need to get paid. You know, that is their business model. So there can't be just infinite pain and suffering for them. You know, landlords, for example, on the on the rent moratoriums. Most of those folks, or a lot of them, that's their livelihood, right? So, you know, the, those are just not forever things. So when the forbearances and the moratoriums lift, the dam breaks. I mean, period. There's nothing going to be crashing our real estate market faster than when those two things take place. And, and, and they're coming soon. Yeah. And, and to your point, the, evic uh, the evictions for um, renters, too. There's a moratorium mm -hmm. on that, too. And just think of all the, the investors in markets, because yep. there's a ton of, uh, uh, and especially smaller investors. Now we're talking single family investors, folks that mm -hmm. have a portfolio of 5, 10, 15 properties. I'm not talking mm -hmm. 200 to 500 uh, portfolios. So yeah. you, know, you have 10, 15, 20 properties, and 50% of them are not paying you. Yeah. It's a, that, it's that a squeeze. That can that can be a challenge big time. Another thing that's interesting is um, the institutional money that's coming into real estate right now. So if you look at like, um, you know, Blackstone, for example, you know, they're literally going out there. It's the largest private equity firm in the world. Obviously, you're familiar with them, MC, but, you know, they're going out there and buying up whole neighborhoods right now. You know, 100 new build homes, 150, 200 new build homes. Um, there's a an article I read recently in Conroe, Texas, they went out there and they bought up 150 houses. They were all rented before the before they even closed on the deal ultimately. So, you know, folks that were hoping to go out there as just a single family buyer and buy these houses, you know, when you're buying when you're borrowing as a Blackstone, for example, billions of dollars at 1.3% interest, you know, as opposed to John Q consumer that's out there at 3.25%. They can outbid everyone out there by five, ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars on the same property, and their cost basis still makes sense for their math. So that's definitely another factor too that I'm uh, I'm certainly uh, you know keeping on my radar. Yeah, that's another another distortion. You know, you just bring in these, and it's like, man, there's a storm here of yeah. uh, the, of things that provide an imbalance of how yeah. markets function. You know, the supply and the demand and it, it kind of usually equals out, but now on, on the one scale, it's just interest rates and it's the evictions and the foreclosure moratoriums. And then it's the institutional money coming in at very low interest rates where you and I don't get that deal. You know, we, no. we, we, yeah. I wish I could get, I wish I could borrow a billion dollars at 1.3%. <laughs> it's quite, it's quite, it's quite incredible. Uh, Perfect storm is the, is the absolute best phraseology for that you know if you're just looking at all of these things building right now even if some of them don't hit some portion of them are going to hit and almost all of them are catastrophic yeah now if they all hit at the same time i don't even know i mean it, 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 there's some differences between now and 08 for sure there's also some big time similarities from it now we're not with the self-reported income like you talked about earlier you can fog up a mirror and you know buy three houses so you know banking restrictions and and you know oversight obviously over lending institutions has changed since then and rightfully so but uh, there's a lot of other variables out there that are going to negatively affect it and obviously that's what we're discussing here yeah and I think to to your point too this is so tied into the financial system too mm -hmm. because you now have banks that or that have the mortgages right so and mm -hmm. if they don't have them they repackage and sold them some mortgage backed securities and where did they go yeah. they went to pension funds again they went into mm -hmm. retirement accounts so there's a, there's a lot 
they say history don't repeat itself, but it sure does rhyme. So there's there's already this tie now with the whole financial system again. Yeah. And well, and take a look at that to your point. You know, if we're talking about retirement accounts, you know, if you're taking a look at inflation, you know, that's going to wipe out people's savings or take a, you know, a huge chunk away from that. I love your infinite banking concept. You know, that's something that, um, uh, you know, I just think is genius. You know, it eliminates Wall Street, first and foremost, you know, it eliminates that kind of inflation fear. But those people that are out there just keeping it in their standard retirement accounts right now, they're going to get burnt. I mean, big time Inflation's not going anywhere. I mean, that's only going up. Yep. Yeah, and they're starting to sound the alarms. You got big guys like Kyle, Kyle Bass, and uh, Wall Street guys coming, and and gals coming out and just saying, "Hey, you know, it's inflation's around twelve percent." He was saying, "You know, we, I'm a subscriber to John Williams Shadow Stats, and he's been talking about this for a while. How you calculate inflation and how they change it, so it looks mm -hmm. a little bit better to present to the public. Uh, but in, in if you calculate it like I, they did before." You know, we're at around 12%, so it definitely plays in. I mean, and that's another thing where a lot of folk, why real estate, you know, add another thing to real estate prices spiking mm -hmm. is essentially people are running towards hard assets too because of those fears that are stoked, right? Yep. Yeah, exactly. And you've got all the, you know, the um, digital currency out there right now, and that's just been so volatile. Um I like the play. I like it as an asset class, but I mean, look, just look what that's thing. That thing's been a roller coaster over the last handful of months. So, you know, there's just a lot of economic uncertainty out there right now. And again, I always talk off, and I, I wish I had that crystal ball. If you can, if you, if you can track one down for me, MC, I'll split the cost with you. What do you think? Yeah. The crystal ball business is a tough one. I always say <laughs> crystal ball. It's a very tough business to be in. But to your point, you know, for folks, and th and that's why I always share, you know, on on our show, we give you, we we tell it, we tell you what we're seeing. You know, there's no sugarcoating it because if you understand the new environment or what's happening, you see mm. the dangers, which we just summarized. You're going to see massive opportunity in the storm mm. because with all these dangers and elements that there are uh, for folks that have calm, cool heads and see it coming, there's going to be a massive opportunity. You're going to be on the, on the right side of that. And unfortunately, not, and, and not be on the wrong side of, of this pullback or correction when, when it comes. Yeah. And I, there's a quote that I love. Um, I, I really follow Warren Buffett. I've read, you know, about anything I can get my hands on with him. He's got a phenomenal quote. And out there right now, and you said the right side or the wrong side, there's never going to be, um, you know, the perfect time for someone to make a decision, whether it's with pink. And, you know, there's people that have trepidations getting involved with us. For obvious reasons, there's a cost, you know, associated with that. So people don't always want to go out there and buy businesses. People don't always want to go out there and buy or are afraid to buy crypto when it's down, well, then they kick themselves when, you know, it's going back through the roof again. You know, there's all these asset classes and investment ideas out there, but Warren Buffett, and I, this quote always resonates with me, when opportunity rains down, put out the bucket, not the thimble. Put your money